It's time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament Empire Make History on Your Living Room Floor. The board is in something of a calamity. Some of these little action figures up here, I got a new card holder for the champions, um, fell down. And also, I, my cat has been getting into the room there. See how it's tied shut? And there's actually a lock, but it locks from the inside. And as, uh, I don't know what it is what it is about this but both of these doors and maybe someone who's into doors can tell me both these doors had these ball bearing things that eventually popped up and those kind of held it shut um, and I even greased them the grease the second one because the first one eventually popped up and so I just permanently locked it in the second one now see it has a spring there whenever you put the ball bearing in it pops back up again anyway the, the upshot is the cat can get in here now um, we try to tie the door shut but sometimes we do better than others and so look at this this is terrible I I think it's uh, I'm gonna have to reconstruct this from a vague memory it's been several days since I played and even then last time I played my brain wasn't really here I'm not going back to watch the videos because I don't think I would find it exciting enough and I might just never do it so we're gonna continue I'm gonna do a little reconstructive gaming surgery so to speak and then we'll continue with Destructo's turn he's he's in a he's still playing tug of war with Vaughn over there. Man, she has two capitals. Wow. I just noticed that. She's actually, despite her her pathetic board presence, she's technically winning. I bet these are. Um, though, you know, for sheer strength. I don't know. I, I'll, I'll reconstruct and we'll just play and then we'll see who wins. Structo's starting the game off with a quandary for me. He played this land purchase on Weasel here. Uh, trying to get get him out of this space, which is a very smart move. The problem is, is it says the the units here go to that player's capital, um, but I don't know where Weasel's capital is. He doesn't have one. So do we move him to what used to be his capital? Do we just move him somewhere? Um, maybe. It seems kind of cruel to make it so they just loses all the units. Um, I think I'm going to decide that Destructo can place the units where he wants. That seems like, you know, because then he still has power and then Weasel doesn't lose the units. And that would just be fun. So he's going to put um, three there and two here. And I'd probably say he has to put them all in one space, actually. Maybe we'll put them all here. I think there's no limit on... There's limit on limits on these land spaces, but not in the ocean. The problem with the ocean, you can only muster one die when attacking or defending. So he stuck them right there. Um, yeah, that's, that's a great solution. And it's Destructo's turn now to place the naval blockade. Um, Vaughn is going to be restricted in her troop gaining and that's actually going to make it so Vaughn gains no troops on her turn no units as this game likes to call them until she's able to get rid of this naval blockade up here other than that Destructo's not doing any attacks he just kinda reinforced um, I think he's counting on the perhaps encroaching pinky to weaken Vaughn up um, either here or there and then be able to take this this space we'll see and after many, many years of m just momentary advancements, um, Pinky played something permanent. Paratroopers on this space right here. This is going to let her put her three reinforcements that she gets. And here's where my reconstruction maybe hurt her. She might have had this space, but I'm assuming, well, I don't know. Um, and so she's dropping those those units, those three reinforcements right here, and she's going to attack this card draw space. I think, yeah, well, I don't know. Yeah, I think she is. She likes card draws, even though it's not going to actually give her any more card draws. So it's going to be three on one. And she did it. Great job, Pinky. 
Weasel has decided to shift his focus from Destructo's new world, um, and instead he's he moved he's moving his um, pirates northward, and he's using his bombers to attack uh, Junior's capital. So we'll see how that goes. It's going to be three on three. Um, Weasel gets a minus two. Junior has no face down cards to to help himself, so it's just going to be straight minus two. Weasel's got to be lucky to get anything. But he doesn't lose anything either, other than tipping his hand. Alright, so there's an 8, a 7, and a 5. And that's going to be very effective. That is going to be 3, 6, uh, wow. He just got rid of Junior's capital. And he can actually move and take it. Um, 2, and he attacked with 3 there, so... And there, Weasel has a capital again. After using his special robotics card, Junior is all set to take back his capital. He's pretty buffed up. I ended up pulling in, I think, 12 units this turn. However, Weasel has one of his three special tricks. And it I'll, I'll just reiterate, the players kind of have... Um, the cards they have now are going to be essentially the cards they have the rest of the game, as long as they, they continue to get card draws. Um, Though Weasel doesn't have any right now. Oh, actually, he does because of this. Um, so they, they, these cards have sort of developed to be their personal power. So his is um, unlikely. The Visiting Dignitary. It makes it so that the attack is called off. Um, we'll say he's probably attacking from here. And Junior cannot attack him <laughs> anymore this turn, which has got to be frustrating. Um... Junior is still, without a capital, still pretty strong, and I think he's going to take out his aggression on um, Sonny down here. Try and take back this technological space. So, Sonny, let's see if Sonny wants to play whatever this is. Hmm. I don't think he wants to waste that card right now. He's going to hold on to it in case there's another attack against him. So, it's three on one. And Junior does have the propaganda, so he if he wins, he gets to keep, he gains a unit. And he wins, so he gains a unit. This will go away. He'll get another one right here. And he doesn't like to hold on to the Holy Land, so he'll throw them all down. And Sonny is going on the offensive. Um, he feels pretty strong now. He got this uh, booming production, and he got some guys. And now he's going to attack his big forces against um, Junior's big forces right here. His forces are larger, Sonny's are, and he has a machine gun, and he has high ground, low ground, so he feels like his chances are pretty good to do some demolishing, and he senses that Junior is weak without his headquarters. So it's three on three roll, um, Sonny gets a re-roll, Junior gets nothing, um, and Sonny gets a plus one, Junior gets a minus one. Pretty bad. All right, so that's... Eight, three, one, so that's seven, two, zero against seven, six, five. So Sonny's going to lose one, and Junior's going to lose two off that right there. And Sonny's going to continue. We have zero, or nine, four, two against eight, two, one. And that's a smashing victory. He's just going to keep going, keep pressing. Three on one now. Yep, and he took Junior out pretty easily there. And he'll send in... Doesn't want to doesn't wanna make that weak. He's also going to attack these pirates here. Um, those pirates are weasels, and I don't think Weasel was actually intending to attack him. However, um, this is a good time for Sonny to exert his strength since he has high ground, low ground in play. And he is going to see what he can do against Weasel's pirates. Three on three. And three, three, one, five, three, two, yeah, two, two, one. Yeah, three pirates are gone, and he's going to continue. Sonny feels really strong. And that is going to do it for the pirates. They are out of there. 
Um, does he want to attack anywhere else? He doesn't really have a place he can do that from. Um, oh, but there's this weird stack there. I think he will attack that weird stack. i got to look at the naval rules um, real quick, and I'll be back. All right, this is incredibly lame, but he's going to move these guys up here anyway. Um, so basically, how the naval rules work is Weasel gets to roll one die to defend um, here. And if he's not successful, he loses all the units. So... Sunny is going to be decimating him, is my prediction. And, yep, 10 against 9, 10 wins. All of these units are gone, and that is really rough. Rough turn on Weasel, fairly rough turn on Junior so far. And now we will go to Vaughn. In his unadulterated hubris, Sunny failed to remember to um, keep his uh, troop count low in order to avoid Vaughn's earthquake. So he got hit with it. It's down to one. Vaughn, the only other thing she's going to do, she's in kind of a tough position, as she's been since the start of the game. Um, she's got Pinky outside here. She can't really retaliate um, because, well, she could, but Pinky has all these face-down cards, and the retaliation could end up hurting her worse than it would hurt Pinky. She's also not getting any units because of this naval blockade. Um, if she attacks, she could lose out. It's not very likely, but she could. Um, and then, you know, she has Destructo and Pinky right at her door there. Pinky's, this space is the same as this space. Um, she's going to attack, though, because otherwise she's just going to be sitting there the rest of the game, unable to pull in any units at all. So she's going to go three on one against Destructo from this space. And that's success, and now she's going to do it from the other space. And if she's successful, the blockade's totally gone. And she's successful. So it did um, delay her a turn, but other than that, the blockade has disappeared. And actually, she will... Will she get to draw it? Yes, yeah, she will get to draw this card. So she now owns the blockade again. Wait, when do you discard it? Discard when blockade is broken. Yeah. Destructo's turn. He's about to go on a rampage. He got all these units with his industrial revolution and now he bioengineered all of them. So he gets a plus two on all his rolls. So first he's going to attack um, Vaughn. He's going to attack her capital from right here, which he feels is his capital. Um, Vaughn has a choice to make her. One thing she has is politics to protect her. Um, she also can de defend herself like normal, but she has to decide whether or not to waste her politics on that one space. I don't think she's going to do it because here Destructo has these other two uh, adjacent hexes that um, have quite a few more units. She's probably not going to be able to stop them all. So she's going to just try and fight this one out. She has no face down cards. Three on three battle. Um, actually, what are his technical advancements? He gets to use... Oh, he only has three there, though. So he gets to use three. And then he has his guerrilla warfare. So he can try that first. And that's successful. So what does that do? Um, it counts as a hit. So I guess she loses a guy. Yeah. All right. So now it's three on three still. I said last time that I was going to try and go faster, but this is fascinating stuff, so we're still going at the same rate. Alright, um, a lot of a game can be one's mood, I think. Seven, four, four, three. Wow, not a very good attack for him. He, oh, but he gets plus two, so that's nine, six, five. So he only won one there. Um, it's still going to take her down a notch. He's down to one. I think he's done what he wanted to from that space. Now he's going to attack the capital from this space. Um, she's going to go ahead and use her politics on that. So he can't attack with this space, but he can move from this space. But he can move over to here and attack from this space. And there's really not a lot she can do. She's going to have to deal with it. Um, four on two. He gets a plus two bonus. And, wow, she had a, a very nice defense. She actually held on and took one of his units out. But he did get one of hers. And now this is probably going to be the last stand for Vaughn. This particular capital, anyway. And, indeed, she lost this fellow here. He is going to go ahead and 
I guess bring in majority of this stack. Yeah. Hold the capital strongly. Oh, he doesn't want to be too strong though because of the earthquake. So what does she have? She has five. I think five is kind of the standard limit. Yep. And then he's going to send these three across. And he's going on after this space right here. So that's going to be three on two. Now you know why you call him Destructo. Yeah. That's a 10, so that's a tie. Oh, this is an 11. That's actually higher than 10. Um, there we go. He defeated it handily. He Remember, he gets plus two dollars roll, so he's going to move these guys in, take that space, and he's going to send two there, two there, and that's two spaces, and that's where he is. I don't think he can move any further than that. Pretty good turn for Destructo. Does he want to do anything else? Any other reinforcing? I don't think so. He's going to draw his cards back, and that's going to be the end of the turn. Oh, except for Bioengineering, he discards that on his next turn. So there is a disadvantage to using these kinds of cards. You don't get them back. And some of them you actually discard on someone else's turn. Like There's an assassination one. If you, if you use that on someone, then they get to assassinate you. So you lose control of that power. That's kind of interesting. All right, went bam, bam. Pinky, she pretty much just reinforced. She's got, she's looking very strong now. She's very careful not to go above five anywhere. Five seems to be the magic number. If you go higher than that, someone will um, do an alien attack or an earthquake on you. Um, then Weasel, he retreated from his bomber spot. So he left, he left Greenland finally he, in favor of Europe. He's going to just try and hole up here in um, that blurry country and hope no one hits him. And Junior's gonna try and take his capital back. Um, three on three. He gets a unit if he wins. Um, and Weasel has nothing up his sleeve. This could be Weasel's semi-last stand. Um, ooh, very good defensive roll though. That's gonna take off a whole chunk of Junior's attacking forces. Um, and does he want to continue the attack? I th think he might want to hold off from there. And likewise from here. He is going to hold it. Well, now he's going to attack from here. If only because of the um, whole stacking thing. Well, he could just move two of the guys here. Yeah, I think he is going to hold off. And throw one guy in the Holy Land. Upshot a sunny stern as he took the Holy Land. He's right outside this uh, capital of Europe here, which is now contended by three different powers. Um, sunny, Junior, and the Dying Weasel. Bonson and Earthquake down in uh, Canada, and now she is going to try and take it back. I think she will be successful. Uh, Destructo has no defensive cards. Three on one. And she was successful, so... This capital keeps changing hands, but Vaughn has weakened herself to do it. Definitely weakened herself. Destructo is going to strike back. He's going to start by using these um, bombers that he just acquired here that had been weasels for quite some time. He's not going to bomb the capital, however. He's going to bomb this uh, politics space. So she can decide not decide to use the... Vaughn can decide to use the politics to stop it. She's not going to, though. She's going to hold on to it, hoping that the minus... Um, two that the bombers get will be enough. They're actually bombing with revolver pistols, however, so they get an extra die. And he has marines, so he's going to have... First he gets a gorilla die. That doesn't do anything. Then he gets to roll five dice against the defenses. Um, three, looks like. <coughs> and looks like I'm short a die. So we're going to do it... Maybe I'll go get a die. Five against three, the revolver bombing crusade from Greenland. All right, and we got, that's an eight, three, three, two, zero against, wow, really bad roll. Three, two, one. So he, he destroyed the space just with those bombers. Poor Vaughn, that's really sad. And he's gonna move in, take it from, take it there, and well, he'll decide on that 
next. And then he's going to try and take the capital back. Um, it's going to be four on three this time. He still gets an extra die because of his... This can be the, the gorilla die. Ooh, the gorilla die works. It's going to be four on two. He still gets an extra die because he still has marines. Oh, and then he gets another extra die. That's right. Because of his revolver. The marines have revolvers. And that is going to easily do it. And I think he, he's eradicated Vaughn from the New World. Destructo's take, taken it. You know, she had to try to take that back, though. Um, so here we're sitting, we have two players who are down to one space. Well, he, I guess Weasel has two spaces, but pretty much one space. In fact, it could, he could try to get rid of Weasel. I don't think Destructo really wants it. Yes, he does. He's Destructo. Okay, he's going to attack Destructo from here. And that's going to, first he gets to use his Gorilla Die. And that fails. But then he gets to use five dice again. Five on one. And that'll do it. So Weasel is out of there as well. All right, two people down to one capital. And the aliens just served Pinky to remove Sunny from the game. They got rid of all the the um, units from this space here, which was tied for five. Five was the magic number. People should have gone for four. It would have been interesting had they done that because then the, the number people had would have gone down and down and down. Um, and then she used her, her paratroopers to drop right in there and just waltz into the city. Um, so she has two capitals now, and she's going to try to get a third. Um, and if she does, I think we're going to say the game is over. I don't know if I'm going to keep playing beyond that. Um, but she's going against Vaughn, trying to take this capital here. If Vaughn is removed from the game, then the game is over. All right, so four against three is going to be the dice. That You know, part of me wants to keep playing. I just think it could... Uh, I'll, I'll speculate on what I think the game would do after this is over. Four against three. Actually, after the game is over. Because this might not do it. Um, nine. Dun, 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 dun. All right, so Vaughn did lose one unit, um, but Pinky is going to lose two from this space. Does she dare she continue the fight? Um, I think she dared. That was supposed to be there. Um, I think she will, just because I declared the game will be over. And I think she wants it to be over. One against three. Wow. Exceptional defense. She got rid of that one. Now it's three on three again. Oh, and Vaughn? Yeah, Vaughn doesn't have any sort of benefits. Neither does Pinky. Four, six, four. Wow, Pinky's rolling terribly. That's going to be a tie, though, so they're going to each lose one. Pinky wins a war of attrition, I think. So that's two on two. And then nine and four, and that's going to be double loss. Ooh, it's down to it. She's got these two more units. She could funnel more in through here if she needs to. Two on two down to Australia um, and then she she definitely took it there and that's going to be the game and that's going to do it for Empire make history on your living room floor um, I you know I, I could have very well kept playing and finished the game how I, how I think I would have probably gone is we would have had two two mighty powers right we would have had pinky and we would have had um, destructo Right? Then we would have had the people in the middle. We would have had Junior and Sonny still continuing their fight for Europe, which Pinky could have actually held on to Europe with her defensive cards. Uh, then it would have come down to, I mean, I, I, I think it would have been, the chances were that Pinky probably would have won. And the reason why she had that paratrooper card and that alien invasion card. So the alien invasion card, people would have either had to um, keep drawing down their forces, in which case she could just waltz in, right? So some, you know, someone would be drawing the earthquake card, but chances are she could have just waltzed in. It was actually her turn, so she could have been the one to draw the earthquake card. And 
you know, picked off her last capo and won if she played smart. Or if the other people didn't gang up on her. I think she probably could have had the game even if they did that. That would have been fun to play out. However, here's where we run into this game and the world that this game is in. I think this game could be fun to play again, you know, for a really long time. I've played Risk for a really long time back when I was younger. Um, however, within a world where there's games that are a lot more interesting, I think, to play and still offer a multiplayer dynamic, I don't know any reason why I really want to do that at this point. Um, I, you know, you can get obsessed with anything if you if you have the gumption, and I certainly do. But there's, um, I'm looking at my wall of games, and there's a lot of other things I want to get obsessed with, like Shogun, which is coming up next. <laughs> um, but definitely, you know, not the worst game in the world. Definitely not deserving of the um, some of the the comments I've read on the internet about it. Um, but maybe I can see how people would have problems with some of the um, the the lack of specificity in the cards. Though you know, it's not the first game that I've played where there's errors in the cards, or and I think it it had far less betting because of its um, lack of popularity. You know, I've played some very good games that had unclear rules before, and you know, I just patched those up by finding a fact or something because you know people cared and they asked. No one cared and no one asked about this, and I don't know that there would have been support or you know it would have been resolved, but. That's, I don't think that can be a, a substantial knock against it, especially since the game's not so, um, so, uh, serious, I want to say, that, um, you can't just kind of patch together some rules, just kind of be like, okay, this means this. You know, sure, you might go back and question yourself, like robotics, I think I made it maybe a little too powerful than it was, but I also didn't use it for what it could have done, which is place units anywhere on the map. Um, so there's that. Ultimately, I think this game fails in doing what it says it does. It, it doesn't make give you any sort of historical feel at all. It doesn't make you feel like you're creating some sort of alternate timeline. Uh, the, the, the cards have, um, you know, they have names of things, and there's some interesting quotes, but they don't really make you feel like you are... These, these don't feel like empires. This doesn't feel like an imperial map. It's a very abstract game. Um, Interesting quotes, though. Interesting game. I'm glad it exists. Uh, I'll play it again someday, maybe. On to Shogun.